the majestic Ko'olau Mountain Range. And welcome to Honolulu, Hawaii, home to the 2022 Big West Women's Water Polo Championship Tournament. of UC Santa Barbara and the beach from Long Beach. Quarterfinal action on the road to the Big West Championship. And good afternoon from the Duke Kahanamoku Aquatic Complex on the University of Hawaii Manoa campus, where the 2022 Big West Conference Women's Water Polo Champion will be crowned this Saturday. Well, we have one quarterfinal left to play. Let's take a look at the brackets for this championship tournament. There you see earlier UC San Diego knocking off UC Davis 12-11. They'll take on Hawaii tomorrow at 11 in the other uh, match before this. UC Irvine 39 winners over season and coming up momentarily Long Beach State and UC Santa Barbara. Hi everybody, Scott Robbs, Femka on, two down, one left to go, number three versus number six when it comes to the seeding, Long Beach State, UC Santa Barbara, what can we expect? I think the past two games, the previous two games definitely told us anything can happen and these teams are not necessarily, one is way better than the other, so I think it's going to be a really tough game, a good game and I think we're going to see some awesome water polo again. Yeah, Long Beach State, UC Santa Barbara have met twice this year, one non-conference matchup one in conference Long Beach State took care of business in both those two but it means nothing now in the pool because everybody starts fresh here in the conference tournament we'll take a break when we come back we'll have the sprint to the ball the starting laps and the beginning the University of Hawaii sports on spectrum sports sponsored by Bank of Hawaii Wanna live and feel like chase my dreams in the sky Oh, in my pursuit of happiness Oh, 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 oh in my pursuit of happiness At Bank of Hawaii, nothing means more to us than helping you pursue your happiness. Bank of Hawaii, live your happy. You know, your grandpa taught me how to tie a hook. You just run the line through the hole, pull it tight, and there you go, right? Okay, so let's cast one. Some lessons you teach are unintentional, like teaching your son the go-to spot for supplies when you're in a tricky situation. Lucky for us, our longs has everything we need. Make longs a part of your day. Mountains to the sea. Spectrum OC16 highlights our beautiful landscape and lifestyle. If you are an expecting mom or know of one, this episode is filled with great information. We've got a healthy smoothie for pregnant moms, and our dance and fitness expert shares an exercise for moms of all stages. We'll meet with the Aloha Diaper Bank to learn how they help keep our cakey clean and dry one diaper at a time. And yes, you can be stylish while rocking a baby bump. We'll show you how on the next episode. Presented by the Suihiro Electric Inc. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineup first for the Gauchos of UC Santa Barbara who come in 11 and 12 on the year and they went one and five in the conference. You want to keep an eye on a couple of players, Lee Leiter 
and Caitlin Snyder. They are the two most offensive players, the top two scorers for the Gauchos. For Long Beach State, they come in as the number three seed, 14 and 13 on the year, three and three. They finish the conference season. R.C. Hertzka, she is a good one, 66 goals on the year for her. So you'll definitely want to keep an eye out for her. So when you take a look at the players in the pool, you'll see the caps that are light color or white. That is UC Santa Barbara and Long Beach State in the darker caps. Let's take a look at the season comparison. Femka, anything stand out to you? I think it's pretty even. Um, a lot of steals for UC Santa Barbara that goes well with how they play. They like to counterattack and play that quick kind of water polo. And a lot of exclusions on the Long Beach side. Um, maybe means that they're a little bit more physical. So I think they're a really good matchup to see. And we'll see who wins the battles. All right, should be a fun one. We mentioned these two played twice this year, back in February, 11-8 in favor of Long Beach State. Then on uh, April 2nd, a 14-9 decision in favor of the beach. These two have met seven previous times in the Big West tournament. Long Beach State has won four of the seven. As we get ready to begin things here, the sprint to the balls dropped in the water. We're underway, the third and final match of the day. And a ticket to the semifinals tomorrow against UC Irvine on the line. Santa Barbara coming out with a hard press right away, putting pressure on the ball on the player with or without the ball. Long Beach playing with a double center right in front of the cage. Moving out here, trying to find the one remaining center right there. 10 seconds on the shot clock. And an ordinary foul for Long Beach. Let's find the open player. It was a really good opportunity, but a great save. McEvely, the, the goalkeeper, did a nice job out of that Lake Elsinore. Take a look at her elevate. And she really steps out of the goal to make the cage smaller for the player. If we come further out of the cage, further forward towards the player, the goal is smaller. We're going to have an exclusion quickly here, so power play for the Gauchos. <laughs> You get the feeling this is going to be another one like our first one of the day, UC Davis, UC San Diego, which went into double overtime. And there's a shot and a goal. So the Gauchos get on the board first. And that goal put into the back of the net by Elena Kotenchian out of Moscow, Russia. Actually, that was for the was Gauchos, it? so it was Nina Munson. Oh, I looked at the wrong team. I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Elena was actually the one that was excluded on the Long Beach side, so... Both number sevens were in play during that goal. Yeah, these teams both are very tough, and that's what we're talking about, the steals. Santa Barbara really likes to play high up in those lines, in the ball line, to really get a hand on that ball and get a steal to counter attack and get one on one with the goalie. Here we see an offensive by the center forward of Long Beach. She went under her defender pushing her defender up, and that's not allowed, so Santa Barbara ball. So looking for that open player. It's a little bit chaotic in the beginning, but they're finding their positions, spreading out nicely in the pool, that half circle. Now keep in mind, UC Santa Barbara played here on March 25th against Hawaii. They lost 16 to 5. Long Beach State didn't play here, so sometimes that can be an advantage. We saw UC San Diego had played here, yeah. uh, win earlier today. Here we see a good opportunity for Long Beach, and they put it away. So the Beach get on the board. And that's Maril Marilia Mimides from Greece. <laughs> So Mimi Dees with her 29th goal on the year. She's a senior. That's kind of lobbed it over and back behind and into the net. Stayed nice and composed there. Found her legs and looked what the goalie was doing. I think this one could be a high scoring affair. Mm, depends on how well the defense is, but I think it, it's going to be an even scoring one. They've scored a lot in the previous games, but you never know. 
So knotted up at one here early in the opening quarter. And there's a shot knocked down nicely by the keeper. McEvely. Peach swimming the ball here down and posting. This is what we call posting up. She goes down to two meters and is a center forward down there. So you're trying to play that isolation. It's two against two on that side with an outside shot that was field blocked. So now Santa Barbara with the ball. Santa Barbara is lacking a center forward. They usually play a very dynamic offense. And here we see an offensive cause by the center forward. Let's take a look at the coaches. First for uh, UCSB, Sorella Kay in her eighth season. Played collegially at UCLA. We can get another whistle. And we see a um, quick offensive on Santa Barbara. That is on number four for Santa Barbara. This Long Beach ball. That was probably called because she was kicking off of her player. That was a nice shot. It goes off the crossbar on the skip shot. We've seen, uh, we've seen the goal be the, uh, the the helper of some of the goalkeepers in this one. How about over for Long Beach State, Santa Welch in her third season. We see a lot. Of, we've seen a lot of offensive fouls so far. So let's see if the teams can play a little bit more composed. That one didn't go all the way in, so it's not a goal. And here comes Long Beach State once again. Santa Barbara are really putting pressure early on to the ball. They really try to press their player, so they're not coming back. You see a lot of teams they kind of swim back towards the seven meters regardless of where their players and then they start defending Santa Barbara likes to put pressure on the ball early on it makes it really hard for Long Beach to get the ball you know what's uh, interesting Femco also is that both goalkeepers are freshmen Chelsea Oliver for Long Beach State a freshman of Auckland yeah. New Zealand and uh, Taylor Mecca of the Me out of Lake Elsinore California for the Gauchos Yeah, so young goalies, but that doesn't mean that they are not good enough. They have had a whole season to prove themselves, and they're playing here right now. Yeah, really, when you get to this point of the season, you're only a freshman in standing, right? I mean, you've yeah. had so much action and, and experience, you're, you're not really a freshman anymore. And a lot of these players, there's a lot of internationals and also American girls that um, they have played at higher levels sure. with the national team, national junior teams. So they know what it means to really step up. You have a nice steal for Beach on that power play. And you look at the Big West Conference, every team nationally ranked, and there are seven teams in the league, and probably top to bottom is the most competitive league in women's water polo. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We've seen that so far. Even uh, to uh, number two against number seven, that was a real, real game and up until later in the third quarter, where Uzi Irvine was able to get away from CSUN a little bit, but. I mean, All teams can win on any given day from each other. The top three teams in the country, though, are from the MPSF. Yeah. But the league is probably not as deep as the Big West. So... We have an exclusion? No, no? we lost the cap. So oh, she that's has what it to is. put okay. her cap back on before they continue play. We saw that in the last game. Yeah, that happens a lot, actually. <laughs> so it's just with a tie under your chin. So if the tie gets pulled or anything, your cap will fall off. And again, it's for both protection of the ears of the players. There's some good defense. You see the arm and there you go. The Long Beach with the ball there, 20 seconds. So it's been Going even up. so far here in this opening quarter Long Beach State with the ball looking for the shot and a nice save by the keeper McEvely. Santa Barbara here on the counter attack 
looking to get an advantage or an early entry into their center. With a little bit more movement than we've seen so far. Shot goes wide. Well, they look to be pretty evenly matched. Yeah, I definitely think they are. I, we've seen a handful of uh, exclusions on Long Beach side already. Um, on the flip side, we've seen a bunch of offensive fouls on the Santa Barbara side. Nice pass inside the goal. That one ripped into the back of the net by Orsi Herska. Her 67th goal on the season, the junior out of Budapest, Hungary. So that's a really nice pass, right? where it should be, she picks it up and she just shoots it in the back of the net. She doesn't even think about it. There you get some new players into the pool on both sides. Some fresh arms and fresh legs. Yeah. Especially early on in the tournament, of course, you do want to, you don't want to um, think too far ahead, but you do want to think ahead too. You don't want to overexert all of your players and then come tomorrow, they're too tired to function. But you've told me you've had, you've had uh, tournaments where you've played a couple of days in a row of two matches in a day, right? Yeah, yeah. We even had a tournament all the way uh, on the East Coast. We went to Brown and we played six games in, I think, I believe it was about 60 hours. Oh, wow. And we had 10 field players on the roster. <laughs> so that was rough. But that was early in the season. So it doesn't, it matters, but it's not as important as these games, of course. Yeah. There's an attempted steal. Santa Barbara really aggressive here in the defense, going for that steal. And an exclusion here for Santa Barbara, so a power play for Long Beach. They have a six on five. They're in a four, two, four in the bottom row and two at the top, and they're rotating into. What another great pass inside and the goal. Yeah, kind of like an alley-oop. I believe that was Amanda Price, right, that scored? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That was Amanda Price. So we've seen beautiful passes from the right side of the pool. Very composed, and she really has a clear overview of uh, where she's going, whoever is playing on that side on that time. So they have a really good right-hand right, right -hand side, um, Long Beach. Well, we've it's seen a couple of really sweet passes inside for quick goals for Long Beach State so far. Exactly. So they really do keep a clear eye. And overview on who's open and where to po uh, go to next. One minute or so left here in this opening quarter. 3-1 Long Beach State. Bouchers want to answer, but they'll be called for the offensive. So a turnover and Long Beach State gets the ball back. 50 seconds on the shot clock here. So one more offense for Long Beach and Santa Barbara will be getting the ball back. Long Beach playing fairly st static, not moving a whole lot, but they're trying to find their center forwards. And here we see a steal for Santa Barbara. With 30 seconds on the game and shot clock, they're even. So the keeper for the Gauchos, long outlet pass, finds a player down there. So back up top. Plenty of time to work it into the goal, but that shot comes up short. We have 10 more seconds on the shot clock. We see a Santa Barbara player rushing the goalie here, but Long Beach. They'll launch that one, an easy save. And just like that, the first quarter in the books here in Manoa, scoreboard week. Long Beach State three, UC Santa Barbara one. We'll come back, we'll have the second quarter. Malama'aina, to care for the land, is an engagement between people and place. When we all malama, there's nothing we can't change. Learn how you can malama Hawaii at gohawaii.com slash malama. I wanted to wake up to the sound of the ocean. Sun and surf, that's what we were looking for. But the moment we arrived, we found so much more. 
We found beauty. We found adventure. We found a place we'll never, ever forget. In the Coast Guard, your career is in your hands. Become a chef, a highly skilled mechanic, operate boats, pilot planes, learn to lead. In the Coast Guard, you are a part of the bigger picture. Help others, protect our ports, secure our waters, defend our homes. Expand your options in the Coast Guard. about sensational slugging, ace pitching, and jaw-dropping plays. Everything you love about University of Hawaii Diamond Sports is right here. Be part of the excitement only on Spectrum Sports. Well, they say sharing is caring, and Long Beach State's offense has been sharing the ball, and putting it into the back of the net so far in the first eight minutes. They lead three to one. A couple of really nice assists inside for easy goals. So here we get ready to begin the second quarter. Not so much offense from UC Santa Barbara. What did they need to do to get a kick started? Stop making offensive fouls. <laughs> uh, I think, honestly, that's their main issue right now. They play so aggressive in their drives right now that they get offensive fouls at least half of their offenses, and they don't get shots off. And I think that if they fix that, they send a way better chance. Now ready for the sprint. Balls dropped. Who will win the opening sprint? It'll be Long Beach State. So Santa Barbara is definitely a faster and I think more aggressive team. Santa, uh, Long Beach is generally a little bit taller, bigger, stronger. So that's where the differences lay, lie between these two teams. And here we see a steal for Santa Barbara. Lots of white water going into offense here for Santa Barbara. They're all hustling down the pool. Claire Kelly looking for someone to share the ball with. We're getting an exclusion. So a power play right here for UC Santa Barbara. We see an exclusion for Anna DeClear here. She's excluded for 20 seconds and a power play for Santa Barbara. They have six and Long Beach have five players in the pool right now. Over cross, back up top. The shot, the skip shot, and it goes in. Chelsea Oliver was close to that one. She almost had that, but it went between her arms. And Drew Halverson gets it into the back of the net. The red shirt junior out of San Ramon, California. Gets it down to one goal differential here early in the second quarter. That was a big goal for Santa Barbara. You're mentioning all the uh, offensive uh, mistakes they were making, and now they take advantage of a yeah. power play and get a, get a goal. Yeah, they had two power plays before where they got an offensive and one offensive, one two meter. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, it's such a great opportunity. You have an extra man, and you can really pull apart the defense and really find that one spot in the cage that is wide open. And we'll see if Long Beach State can answer back. Long Beach likes to play with a, a double post, so they put two center forwards right in the middle of the cage or in front of the cage, one on each post of the goal. It also takes away a little bit of the counter attack for Santa Barbara. Nice save. Nice save by Taylor McEl Evely. So since it is a tip here, we see McEvely tipping the ball over the cage. We see a corner ball or a two meter for Long Beach. New shot clock, so 35 seconds on the clock. 
And again, they go into that double post. They move around a little bit. And they're forcing Santa Barbara to drop back here to double defend that center forward. Went to Mimides. Long pass, cross. Last shot off the cage. Ricochets back over to Long Beach State. New shot clock. So they've been, by the time this shot clock runs out, it's been a minute and a half of offense for them. And that one trying to two-hand or get it over and then eventually get it in. So at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That's exactly what happened. And a goal for the beach. That is uh, Rachel Kowals Kowalczyk for the beach with the goal. Kowalczyk out of El Dorado Hills, another freshman. We've seen a lot of young players in this tournament today. This means the Big West is going to get even tougher and better, I would think, next season. It definitely has changed a little bit with all the COVID extra years mm -hmm. and sophomores, red, uh, freshmen and sophomores. I cannot keep track anymore who's who at yeah, this it gets, point. It does get a little confusing, I yeah. hear that. But they all have a lot of eligibility left to play, so. They're an ordinary foul on the left side for the beach. Jess Hurts go with the ball. Very dangerous. We still have 20 seconds on the shot clock here. And put it back into the center forward. And it's stolen away. So here we see, really see Santa Barbara hustling down the pool again. And this is what, what they do a lot of. Counter-attack, swim, swim, swim. Force your defense to trail you. Yeah, so you want to take advantage of your uh, of your quickness, right? Yeah, definitely. And they're they're very agile. They're very very fast. They they know what they need to do. And here we see a counter attack on the Long Beach side. Yeah, actually, very quick counter attack. Good defense. Not able Gouchers. to get a shot out there. Didn't have as much time as she thought for the Greek Mimides. Shot clock at five. And we see an offensive for the beach. Let's take a look moments ago on a good save right there. Terrific job. Here we see an exclusion for the beach. Orshi Hertzka has to go out for 20 seconds. And we see a timeout for Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara will be coming with a man up after this timeout. Yeah, last time we saw Santa Barbara with a, uh, a power play, they took advantage of it. What about the flow of the game here from the second in the second period as opposed to the first one? I think Santa Barbara is doing a better job of uh, forcing the beach to play a little more defense. That's why they get those um, exclusions. However, Long Beach is still up by two goals. I think the game is a little slow, I feel like. They're very... They're waiting for someone to do something, and no one is really picking it up. But this is a really good opportunity for Santa Barbara to come within one goal of Long Beach, and then we'll see how it goes from there, if they can really get closer and tie the game. You get the feeling this one's going to come down to the final quarter. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, of I course. Think, yeah, I think so, too. Unless it? maybe Santa Barbara misses right now, and it'll be a quick goal for Long Beach, but... They should be fairly disciplined and really know what to do. Of course, these two teams plan to move on to the semifinal tomorrow. The winner will face UC Irvine. Our coverage of this tournament will begin at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. And we'll see Hawaii taking on UC San Diego. Winners over UC Davis earlier, the very first match this morning. It's been all day out at the pool. The weather's been nice. It has been not too hot, but sunny. I don't think it's been too bad for the players, not too windy, a little overcast. That's your weather report. <laughs> Look out, Guy Hoggy. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Now let's look at the numbers from the last time these two teams played. 14-9, Long Beach State won it. And see the shot advantage, the assist advantage to Long Beach State. Both shot at a pretty good percentage. Three more steals for the beach. They had a couple of more exclusions and uh, they split the sprints. So they're fairly even except for the final score. Yeah. It feels like this one is, is, I don't know if it's even, but it's definitely competitive. It is pretty even, I think. Maybe not in steals and such, but shots, I feel like we see a lot of shots. On, almost every offense is ending up in a shot right now. Gauchos trying to move it around, and here comes Long Beach State. They're coming up defensively, and there's another offensive, right? No, that was they just stole the ball, oh, okay. so I guess it's uh, I wouldn't call it an offensive. It's more she stole the ball and she got pulled. So the Gauchos were not it on time. They got even, so that means that a Long Beach player was coming back in the field already, and they hadn't shot yet. Both teams are. Really aggressive. <laughs> We're hearing like more whistles than we have in the first two. Definitely, yeah. I think both teams are pretty physical, whereas I would call Santa Barbara way more aggressive, and Long Beach maybe a little. They like they like to hold on a little bit more. They're stronger. They're just trying to pick someone up and put them behind them. So you definitely see those battles going on in the pool at every position. Here we see an exclusion. So another power play for Santa Barbara. Yeah. So here we saw someone pulling back the offensive player while she was going for the ball. You're not allowed to pull or pull a suit or whatnot. So an exclusion, 20 seconds to the box. Santa Barbara trying to find an open player with a little bit of a bad pass there, but luckily there was someone behind her. I'm gonna try to get that shot off, partially blocked, fight for the ball. Exclude the player back in. It's Long Beach State's ball. Here we see a Santa Barbara player trailing. Here we see a long outlet pass. There's a player down there. She's open. She's going for that inside water turn, but he's right at the goalie, so the goalie can steal the ball while the defender has both her hands up neatly so that she can just let her player turn towards the goalie and the goalie can steal the ball away. And that was Hertz good. And you always have to keep an eye on. Yeah, yeah, she's good. Typical for a Hungarian player to do that move. They like to go for that inside water and really turn their player, getting close up with the player and then trying to force the referee to make a call there. Oliver with the nice stop and then the nice, nice outside the outlet pass, but another save by Muck Evely. Both keepers doing a nice job. I mean, it's 4-2 and there's two minutes left in the half. Yeah, definitely. There's uh, There's been a lot of shot blocks. Goalies are really doing well. A lot of uh, shots from outside. We haven't seen as much center forward work as we have seen in the previous two games. The skip shot saved. Do you think both these teams should try to work to get it more inside to try to find um, success or? I think Long Beach will would like to go more inside. So we did see in a backward exclusion. So a backward exclusion is when on when you're going from offense to defense and you're still on your offensive side, you're getting excluded. So we see an exclusion for Santa Barbara, timeout for Long Beach. And this is to set up something for the power play. Yeah. So they really want to put the right players in, get them to the right positions, and everybody will be on the same page. This is what we're doing. This is where the ball has to go. If that doesn't work, then this is what we're doing. So both teams surrounding their head coaches. Getting ready to come back up and begin things as I feel a little water. I don't know if it's from a player or from a, maybe, a little, maybe a little maybe a little maybe a little manoa miss. That is a very common. Don't forget later on tonight we will have men's volleyball action from the uh, Big West tournament taking place literally right next door to the pool. Yeah. Better action. At least that will be indoors if the rain really picks up. So do not be worried. You can come out. I don't think there's going to be any rain. Maybe a little bit. It smells like rain. Well, well yeah, now you can <laughs> see it, actually. We're under kind of covered. 
I know I'm not going to melt. You might. <laughs> yeah. I'm That's made of salt. You're made of sugar. So. <laughs> All right. 4-2. The score. Long Beach State. 37 left to play here in the second quarter. Power play for Long Beach State. Let's see what they discuss during their timeout. Ball goes out to the right side. Let's we'll see what they wrote up. See if they try to get it inside like we were talking. The goal is to really pull apart the defense here. See if there fall, there's any holes that fall from the defense not being in their right position. Leaving the goalie by themselves, hang out to dry. And that shot ripped into the cage. And that is Anna Declare there with the goal. She happens to be out of Rotterdam, Netherlands. So this is a really nice pass all the way across the pool and she catches it, it's on her legs and shoots over her swimming defender. So her defense should have had a hand up and shot block there. Instead, she is swimming, trying to chase the ball, leaving the goalie out to die. 35th goal on the year for her. So Long Beach up by three now and we have a minute to go in this second quarter. Swinging around over on the other side. Santa Barbara is driving a lot more than Long Beach does. So by driving, I mean what we see right now. Someone swimming towards the uh, cage. She gets that ball right there. And because the ball, the defender was behind her, she's getting excluded. And a quick goal for Santa Barbara. Yeah, so Santa Barbara takes advantage of that. The goal by Drew Halverson. That's it down to a two goal differential. 40 seconds left to play in the quarter and a half. We get a couple of new bodies in for the Gauchos. They're trying to set up some defense as well. Yeah. Five second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. So we'll be seeing an after goal play for Long Beach here. They're trying to set themselves up so that they still can get another great opportunity before the end of this quarter. Santa Barbara playing press again, so they're pressing the ball, they're pressing the players. And an offensive on Long Beach side, so... So a chance now for the Gauchos. With 25 more seconds to go, that's enough time to really set up. But they're going for a quick counter on the right-hand side. We see a lefty. Yeah, Katie Dill, a lefty. And the I believe they calls it as a goal. They're going to say that went in. 15 seconds left to go, second quarter. So it's 5-4 now. So that was Kate and Snyder. Let's take a look at this one more time. You tell me what you saw. I, this angle is really hard to see. I, we have to trust the referee here. She saw it better than we did, probably. It's a hard call. I don't know if I would have called it, but... Anyways, it's 5-4 for the Gauchos now. Uh, for Long Beach now. Less than five seconds left. There's the horn. The beach can't get off the shot, and we have ourselves a really, really good one. As we take a look at an almost goal. And, uh, that one was not a goal. Halftime, 5-4 Long Beach team. We'll take a break, come back and have more from Manoa. University of Hawaii Sports on Spectrum Sports. Sponsored by your Hawaii Honda dealers. Drive a Honda. The adventures go on and on. Follow your adventures with the thrilling performance of Honda. The brand owners are calling the most fun to drive. Hurry into a local Honda dealer where new vehicles are arriving daily. You're watching Spectrum Sports. To the next 125 years of families. The next 125 years of entrepreneurs. And the next 125 years of dreamers who never stop pursuing their happiness. 
Mahalo for letting Bank of Hawaii help you pursue what makes you happy for the last 125 years. We can't wait to see and be a part of the next 125. What I love about working at Kaiser Permanente is our approach to caring for our patients. Our healthcare teams and systems are in place to support patients and achieve better outcomes. Members have an incredible choice of physicians. It's inspiring to see our care team come together for our patients. Here it's like Ohana, and I think our patients can feel that. That's how healthcare should be. I can't imagine doing it any other way. Spectrum OC 16's weekday primetime lineup makes it easy for you to catch all your favorite shows. All the best of Spectrum OC 16, Monday through Friday in primetime. Exclusively on Spectrum. And it's our final first round matchup of the Big West Women's Water Bolo Championship Tournament. It's halftime. The Long Beach State leads UC Santa Barbara 5 to 4. When we come back, the sprint to begin the third. The new season just dropped. Enter the big dinner box from Pizza Hut. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings all in one box. You'll run out of episodes before you run out of food. The big dinner box, only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. I think it's time your mom moved in. I officially love you all over again. Our banker Noah said we can use our home equity for a nice Ohana unit. Need a Noah in your life? Get your banker at ASBHawaii.com. Hey, how's it going? You got Lanai with Cooking Hawaiian Style, presented by Aloha Mortgage Advisors. And this week in the kitchen, look who's with us, Mr. Olympian. Hey, Mana Reynolds will be joining us. What are you going to make? I'll be making my grandma's famous poisson couche. She Ooh. taught me how to make that nice. since I was young. And just chicken long rice, something my family always made me as a kid. Who makes it the best? I do. You do. All right, so we got family recipes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> make sure you check out your local listings for times. It's Cooking Hawaiian Style with Hey, Mana Reynolds. <laughs> In next week's episode of Ultimate Stand, we'll be starting a brand new season. We'll be taking the Hawaii people to Kyushu. Kyushu no mae ni Narita Kukou de oishii osoba to tempura tabemashita. Ooh, it's so good. And then we're going to beautiful Yutoku Inari Shrine and then have a wonderful tofu lunch there. Don't miss it. So remember, follow me as you can experience Japan like you've never, never done, done before. This month on Spectrum OC 16, the best baseball talents in the state collide. And the ladies light up the diamond in the race for the OIA Softball Championship. There's nothing like postseason sports. Only on OC 16, exclusively on Spectrum. The new season just dropped. Enter the big dinner box from Pizza Hut. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings all in one box. You'll run out of episodes before you run out of food. The big dinner box, only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. It's halftime here in Manoa. Looking at the score, 5-4. Long Beach State leads UC Santa Barbara. There you see the numbers. What do you think, Femka? Lots of exclusions for Long Beach, but Santa Barbara has only been able to put away 50% uh, of it, so three out of six, whereas Long Beach has put away two out of two, um, which is only one difference. And then we did see the shot percentages drop a little bit, but it's a, it's a really even game, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. It's even, and the two sides will... Switch or two teams will switch sides now. And they'll go in the other direction as we get ready for the horn and the whistle and the ball drop. 16 minutes remaining for one of these teams to keep their season alive as the ball is dropped. The sprint will be won by a stalemate. And, and so <laughs> they both push the ball underwater when they don't know who pushed the ball under first. That's a referee ball, so it's a jump ball. And that will be another one because it's out of bounds. So in water polo, you cannot push the ball underwater. That's a foul. And Long Beach State will control it. Yeah. It took a little bit, but we're underway. Long Beach with the ball, setting up. 
Santa Barbara's been tracing, uh, chasing Long Beach State throughout the first half, but it, it feels like right before the half, they got the momentum. So we'll see Definitely. who comes out with it here in the second, second half. Yeah, it is a longer break. It's a five minute break in between uh, second and third quarter. So you do have time to reset and really start no matter how you ended the previous quarter. So we'll see where we thought Long Beach would go into halftime with three goals ahead. It's only one. And Santa Barbara here with the ball looking to even the score. Yeah, a lot of times I, I feel that that timeout, that halftime timeout, hurts the team that has the momentum, regardless of what sport it is. Yeah, definitely. But it also hurts your arms if you don't have that extra. Well, yes, brain. of course. <laughs> we we yeah. understand that. I'm not saying eliminate the time <laughs> or the halftime. Good. I don't think they will. But you never know. Long Beach with the ball here. Trying to put it inside. Has they get it inside quickly. There's a shot. The lob drops in for the goal. That was number two, Marilla Mimides out of Greece. So here she gets really, she gets her defender on her back and she has a lot of space. So the fact that she's out, out, out of five meters means that she has space for the ball to be placed between her and the goalie without the goalie being able to steal it. Is actually leads the team in assists, but gets a goal right there. And that's what also she won that second jump ball uh, that we saw earlier. Um, a Greek player, they re usually really, really good on their legs. She's actually, the, she's actually the reigning Big West Conference Player of the Week because last week against CSUN, she had a career high six goals in their win against the Matadors. Here we see an exclusion on Long Beach, so the men up for Santa Barbara. That'll be their seventh power play of the afternoon. And they take advantage. Long range shot is good. That one put in by Claire Kelly right there for Santa Barbara. So the Gauchos in the beach trading shots here. Again, Santa Barbara really putting pressure on the ball and almost have that steal here, but instead it's an exclusion going over the head, too aggressively swimming over the head. So that's an exclusion for Santa Barbara. Um, number 17, that's Aiden Flynn. She's excluded and we have a power play for Long Beach. Long Beach is at 100% out of their power plays right now. So we'll two see. For two for two. Yeah. Now two for three. That was not the best shot, I think. Santa Barbara ball, and they are up here. One of the beach girls is trailing. Well, they always say, whoever they is, that it's hard to beat a team three times in a season, right? The Long Beach State has beaten UC Santa Barbara twice already this year. Definitely hard. It's hard to play the same team over and over again. The tendencies of players, they, they won't change within the season. They are so built into their system. You can make little adjustments, but so your defender will really know, oh, she likes to go inside, oh, she likes to do this or that. So it's hard to play against people that are familiar with you. Well, I think a good example of that is our first match of the day where UC Davis and uh, UC San Diego play. Davis had beaten them three times this year, but UC Santa Barbara, or excuse me, UC San Diego won it when it mattered here today. Yeah. Here we see a penalty shot, or a penalty foul for Santa Barbara. They will be taking the penalty, so that was not a goal because there was uh, a whistle for the five meter first. And we have a yellow card for um, the coach of Santa Barbara, even though they got a <laughs> five meter. Sorella Kay gets the uh, yellow card. She has been a little bit on the nerves of our referees and came all the way up to the middle cone. You're not allowed to pass five meters as a coach. And he cruised her with the shot. She scores. And we're knotted up. 
That's almost impossible to stop. It is, it is, it's very hard. It's a mental game for the only the field player that is to shoot. If the field player shoots properly, they will definitely score. If they hesitate, that's when the goalie sets a chance. So tied at six, take a look at some of the offense of UC Santa Barbara. And this one started off a bit slow early, but they certainly have picked it up. We see a lot of nice outside shots here from Santa Barbara. Long Beach is not putting enough pressure on the ball, really leaving Santa Barbara open, and they take great advantage of that, evening up the scores. You know, if, if you start shooting from the outside, is that going to force Long Beach State to bring their defense out and open up the inside, the center? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm kind of wondering why they were falling back so much. Maybe it's because of the drives, because you see San, or Santa Barbara doesn't necessarily have the best center forward. They don't have a really strong girl that plays in that position. Um, they're more known for swimming a lot, moving a lot. So I would think that Long Beach can put way more pressure on the ball, especially they've had so much time on their legs to fake and put the ball away. So maybe that's what the coaches are telling them now. We got a viewer question for you, Femka. A big fan of yours. They want to know, can you have two exclusions at the same time? Double exclusion, yeah. So on both teams or on the same team? On the same team. Everything can. So you can have a double exclusion. Have you seen that? Um, yeah, yeah. Where two people, it's usually a couple seconds uh, delayed, so one will be excluded. So say on Santa Barbara, hypothetically, someone gets excluded, and then a couple seconds later, someone else will be excluded. So there's a two, three second differential. You see that, you see that quite a bit. And then you can also have a double exclusion so that both teams, they have both one player that gets excluded. So it'll be five on five instead of six on so six. So no advantage there. No, no. <laughs> well, thank you for asking that question, and thank you, Femka, for answering. Back to live action after the timeout. Long Beach State on the offensive. And Santa Barbara putting a lot of pressure on the ball again. Long Beach moving a little bit more to move the ball along. Bringing that second center right there. And an offensive. So Santa Barbara will be with the ball on the counter attack. Trying to bring it down quickly. Nice two hands up in the defense, but... And there's the goal! That was perfectly done by the Gauchos. And that was number six, Caitlin Snyder, with the goal. She's had a couple already. Yeah, she came in with 40 on the year. She's out of Fresno. So you really see how she turns away, and the defender's just two hands up, doesn't want to foul, but by doing or by putting both her hands up and not defending, she allows for Caitlin Snyder to really step away and shoot the ball. And Santa Barbara takes their first lead of the match. 7-6 here in the third. Feels pretty reminiscent of that earlier match today between UC San Diego and UC Davis. Yeah, that was a good one. This one is equally as good, I think. It's a uh, such an even, equal matchup again. See an exclusion for Santa Barbara and a quick shot for Long Beach that goes over the cage. So no advantage of that power play. Santa Barbara even and going into offense. Ordinary foul here. 20 seconds still on the shot clock, so there's a lot of time for Santa Barbara to play. Maybe they'll move a little bit more. We'll go into their center forward. And that skip shot goes in from distance. Third option, or shoot from distance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was Juju Amaral, I think, that scored that yep. goal. Juju Amaral, the freshman. She's out of Santa Barbara. She said, Femka, I'm not listening to you. I'm just going to shoot. Good thing she did listen to you. <laughs> that was a really nice shot, nice goal, wide open on shot. that side. Not only is she from Santa Barbara, she's from Santa Barbara High School. Oh wow. She's Santa Barbara all the way. Through and through. Yeah. 
Must like it over there. So Long Beach now behind, trailing by two. Six to eight for Santa Barbara. Over Long Beach, do you change anything? Uh, they're struggling to do anything in offense, really. They're just taking some quick shots. Maybe here's a good opportunity. They get it inside. Right on cue, Femka. <laughs> so this is actually what they should be doing. They drove someone in, they put the ball to that side, and they were composed enough not to just shoot, but pass the ball here to Anna de Clear. And she gets that ball, she's on her legs, and she just whips it into the cage. So Long Beach chasing by one. And the clerk. Up the clerk. Yeah. Anna de Clear. Clear. <laughs> Another touchy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> They're taking over. So Santa Barbara here with the ball. About three more minutes to go in this quarter, and then a whole other quarter. So there's still yeah. a lot of water polo left to play. Absolutely. You see that Santa Barbara is moving a lot more in offense. Now, by ducking under her uh, defender, she causes an offensive foul. And that's what we saw a lot in that first quarter, too, where they were, were ducking, holding, and all that stuff. This that is pass out too far taken by the keeper. Oliver, Oliver's gonna look down and she finds somebody down there. There's a three on two with girls trailing. Going to the weak side right there with the ball. That's the weak side is a side that's weak for the right hander, so it's really hard to to shoot from that side as a right hander. Still 10 seconds on the shot clock, and they're waiting for someone to drive in. That that shot. Shoot. Too far away, probably that shot. Easy stop. Yeah, and it was a soft, soft, almost a pass back to the goalie. Oliver brings it out. Swimming down. Mimi there, Dees. Lots of Long Beach players all on one side in close proximity of each other. Makes it easier to defend. They need to spread out a little bit more. State trying to tie this one up. About a minute and a half left in this third quarter. Nice stop in the goal. That was one of the first center shots that we've seen from Long Beach. You see a nice entry. It's on her hand, and she backhands it onto the goalie where um, Taylor, Taylor McEvely nice was. Up. Yeah, at the right position. Quickly, action back down on the other side. Santa Barbara comes up empty. Long Beach with the steal and going to offense. One more minute to go in this quarter, and both teams are a little bit tired, I think. I think they can use the break. They try to get it inside. They can't swat it away. So remember, you cannot go inside the two meters without a ball. But if that player on the right side, what well, just happened, she takes it all the way inside of the two meter, everyone can move inside of the two meter if they would want to. Well, it's kind of a 50-50 ball thrown down there. And the youngsters yeah. will have it. There's about a six second differential to make that. 14. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit more than that. So 15 more seconds on the shot clock with a ball wide of the cage. So Long Beach ball with 25 seconds in the quarter. Shot clock turned off. Another outlet pass. And that one will it float in. The goalkeeper chases and stops it from going in. We've seen that a couple times in today's games. Yeah. Where the ball is kind of just hung out there and you're waiting for the ripple to push it over or <laughs> push it back. That one gets pushed back. Yeah, and that's why it would be really great for games like this to have a line referee as well. All right, we're through three quarters here at the Duke Automobile Pool. It's 8-7 UCSB. What is the Big West? The Big West is where the Aloha spirit meets California cool. 
It's a place of unlimited opportunity on the court, in the classroom, and in the community. We're built different in the Big West. We find a way to win with hustle, heart, and hard work. What is the Big West? It's the place where dreams come true. The Big West. Only the bold. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. In the Coast Guard, your career is in your hands. Become a chef, a highly skilled mechanic, operate boats, pilot planes, learn to lead. In the Coast Guard, you're a part of the bigger picture. Help others, protect our ports, secure our waters, defend our homes. Expand your options in the Coast Guard. Friday, the tournament's down to four, and it's survive and advance. It's the OIA Division I Baseball Semifinals, only on OC16, exclusively on Spectrum. Taylor McEvely, the freshman goalkeeper for UC Santa Barbara, is playing like a veteran in this run. She's out of Lake Elsinore, California, and we've seen her make some terrific stops so far in this one. She's really done a terrific job. She comes out when she needs to. She is right where she's supposed to. And she has been there for her defense and for her team. Well, for one of these teams after this next quarter, unless we go to overtime, this season will move on to take on UC Irvine tomorrow. The other will say good night. Good night and goodbye. But one more quarter, eight more minutes of water polo to be played at least. Our first one went into double overtime. So it always goes into double overtime. Two quarters of mm -hmm. three minutes. If there's still not a winner after those two three minute quarters, we will go to um, sudden victory. So whoever scores first will win the game. And Santa Barbara will control the sprint. I'm sorry, Long Beach State. Hit the ball there. Almost a steal by Santa Barbara, but Beach has the ball. And we see a quick exclusion for Santa Barbara. So power play for Long Beach. So that's a big advantage early on in the quarter. That's You really want to grab that advantage and even the score right here. First offense that you play. And that's what they do. Nice job getting it in close to Marilla Mimidil. And she gets the goal. And I believe she did that with her. Look, she did that with her left hand, and she is a right hander. But her right hand is being held by the Santa Barbara player, Amanda, or, um, Claire Kelly. So she decides to go with her left and scores. And Mimi Dees with a couple of goals in this one. I think this is the only one with her left hand. <laughs> so score is even, and Santa Barbara with the ball here. Seeing movement again in the, on the Santa Barbara side. Trying to get it inside. They do get it inside and they get the goal. There were two players for Long Beach State there and they could not stop that shot. Now we see a player coming back and she's just kind of stopped, hesitated. She should have gone full. Anything in water polo should be 100%. So if you go, just go. Be lighter. That's her freshman on Manhattan Beach. That's her first goal today. She's one of the top goal scorers on this team. 
So the Gauchos jump back out in front. Nine, eight, seven minutes left to play in this one. Long Beach setting themselves up. Trying to work for their center. They clear who's being pushed out a little bit, so they're bringing in a second, a new center. Ball is on the right hand side here, trying to find the opening, waiting for the drive. Cross the pool, the skip shot is good from the left side. That's a nice cross pass into Ana de Clear, who finds the back of the net with that skip shot. And as you can imagine, the goalie here on this long, long pass has to slide all the way over that in that cage, and she's just not in time. Did you know her when you were back in the Netherlands? Um, or no, of her, her a little yeah. bit. Yeah, she's a little young. I left when most of these girls that are playing here right now um, were still under 14, under around that age. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's at that age, you don't play against them as much. Whereas right. once you pass 16, 17, 18, you play all against each other, so. An exclusion for Long Beach, number 11. Um, we see that Amanda Price is going to the corner and a power play for Santa Barbara. Quickly over to that right side, the lefty is knocked down. Good job by the keeper for Long Beach, Chelsea Oliver. They moved the ball fairly slow. They weren't able to pull apart the defense quite as well as they, as they have done in the previous power plays. And here we see an exclusion for Santa Barbara. We've seen a lot of power plays in this one. Yeah, we do. It's almost as if this is their third game of the day. Right? <laughs> The Long Beach trying to find that open player. They've been successful going inside to the post. And they do it again from the left side. Shot from the outside by Elena Kot Kotenchian. Kotenchian out of Russia. Just squeezes it in in that top left corner. Shot blocker is not far enough uh, moved over to the side. That should be the shot blocker's corner. And Long Beach on top now, 10 to 9. <laughs> Santa Barbara trying, they move a lot. Trying to force Long Beach to play defense, occupying their defender, or maybe opening up someone on the other side. Back again over to that right corner. Shot clock running down, the shot slapped away. That's a nice save there by um, Oliver. And we see Long Beach with the ball now. When the uh, shot clock gets down like that, we've seen a couple of girls go down the pool. Yeah, yeah. So people, depending on what your coach likes, some coaches really don't want you to do that. And for example, the Hawaii coach wants you to play defense until defense is over. Well, that goal by Long Beach State's Marilia Mimidis again. Well, she's taking over the senior out of Greece. You see a beautiful goal, a nice pass again, and she really, she backhands it in there in the cage. Well, with four and a half minutes left to play, a two-goal lead, it's not insurmountable, but you feel, you're feeling pretty confident. It's, it's been a three, they came from behind, so they were behind eight to nine, and they uh, scored three in a row, so definitely the momentum in their favor. But again, when the shot clock, clock is running out, um, you saw some Long Beach players leave, and they will do that just to uh, um, maybe force, put some pressure on the shooter. If they leave and they, the shooter misses, um, it's an easy pass to a one on nobody. Um, so the defender isn't there. And they also force other players, the offenders, to already go, come back and play defense. 
So just strategy, different philosophies, right? Yeah, you can do it when there's only a few seconds left. If you do it with about eight seconds left, then you get a coach yelling at you because there's still eight seconds and there, there can be three, four more passes mm -hmm. in eight seconds. So you want to time it well and you want to be certain that you're not leaving your own players um, behind so that they have to clean up your mess with an extra player in offense. So getting down the crunch time in this one. Santa Barbara going over things with their head coach. So it's not a power play, it's just six on six. I think they took a timeout just to stop the momentum for, little, for Long Beach and to all be on the same page from here on out. Four and a half more minutes, two goals behind for Santa Barbara. A lot of time left. If you're the Gauchos right here with the ball, you're going to want to score. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Definitely, can, yeah. Yeah, they can keep it within one or two and see what happens. So I'm assuming that we will be seeing a lot, lots of movement on the um, Santa Barbara side. Yeah, they've kind of gotten into a rut lately. I mentioned Long Beach State outscoring them 3-0. Yeah. So let's see what they're doing here. We have two lefties for for Santa Barbara right there. Center is open, but Tommen is falling back, so they go across, and that's a steal for Long Beach. Wanted yeah. to clear with the steal here, and Long Beach ball. Santa Barbara again putting pressure right on the ball, even across, even on the defensive side of Long Beach. Really pushing them back. Mm -hmm. Slowing it down. But it opens up some in offense too for Long Beach as it's only five on five for a little bit. Seven seconds on the shot clock and they take the shot, it misses. Santa Barbara going here into a counter attack. And we see an exclusion on Long Beach. Number seven for Long Beach, Elena Kotanchian is being excluded. So power play for um, Santa Barbara right here. Santa Barbara was pretty good in the power plays in the first half. Let's see what they can put away here. Their biggest benefit is having a couple of lefties. So they're dangerous from both sides. And that <laughs> shot from the left side is stopped. And that's a really nice save by Chelsea Oliver here. That should have been the field blockers um, corner, but goalie was right behind her to save the field blocker from the goal. And McGee throws it into the middle. Just an ordinary foul here, so she kicks it out to the perimeter. Still 18 seconds on the shot clock. That's a lot of time. They can still play something, move a little bit more, find the open player. And that one, did that one cross? No, it didn't cross. Uh, from this angle, it did seem like it did, but I guess it did not. So, the officials was right on the line on the near side where we're at, and she said no. That was kind of a slap shot. It was. So, no go. 11 to 9 still for Long Beach and Santa Barbara ball. There's two minutes and 20 seconds left on the game clock. So Santa Barbara really is starting to need, uh, starting to need to get a goal. Yeah, they definitely have to get a goal right here. And maybe this is the opportunity, an exclusion for Long Beach. So a power play for Santa Barbara. Let's see if they can put this one away. They haven't been very good at the power play here in the second half. As much as they were in the first half, that skip shot saved again by again, Oliver. Again, that's not the best possible shot. So there's still a lot of time on the power play left, and she shoots it already. With a lot of field blockers, a lot of arms up in the air in front of her. Lots of pressure on the ball. Beach is having a hard time getting the ball to the air offensive side of the pool. A steal by Long Beach. Not a steal, or a steal by Santa Barbara, but Long Beach stole it back. Ten more seconds on the clock. You got one on one down in the center area. 
throw it over on the other side. Nobody's even there. Yeah, so they throw it there to dump the ball. Um, the shot clock is running out. She cannot get a shot get up. Rid of it, huh? So yeah, and this way you slow it down. The goalie has to get the ball. But we see a timeout. So what we call here the timeout will have a two for one time. Out. A minute and 25, meaning that Santa Barbara will still get the ball one more time after this offense that they're about to play. Well, you know, both I, I think both goalkeepers have been pretty uh, impressive in this one. You know, look at Long Beach State's goalkeeper, Chelsea Oliver, the freshman of Auckland, New Zealand. Both goalkeepers are freshmen. Down the stretch here, she has made some really big stops to help her team. Definitely, yeah. They both, I think, definitely in this quarter, Oliver has been stepping up and she really picked up. Santa Barbara has not been able to score a lot. And that's what is important, especially in that last quarter. So it's 11-9 in favor of Long Beach State. Santa Barbara calling the timeout. You've got to score on this offensive pos uh, possession if you're, if you're they have to. They have to score. So what will happen is they need a goal right now. Then they will press. Long Beach will probably run out the clock. Uh, that's 35 seconds. And then Santa Barbara gets the ball one more time. And they need to score that as well. Mm -hmm. If they don't score right now, um, Long Beach will get the ball, 35 seconds. Santa Barbara will get the ball one more time, and then Long Beach can run out the clock again. So this is win or lose both offenses that they're about to play. So you're not only looking at the game clock, you're figuring out the, the shot clock as well and possessions. And yeah, there's yeah. a lot, lot involved with it. Definitely. You need to look, especially do you practice this, last mm -hmm. two minutes of a game, two up, two down. So. They, need, they know what they need to do. And Long Beach knows what they need to do. They need to make sure that they don't score, that Santa Barbara doesn't score, and then hold on to the ball for as long as they can. Well, the last couple of times Santa Barbara's had the ball, they've had power plays and they have not been able to score. Yeah, so those were big, big opportunities that they should have scored. But And, oh, this is a big save, if not the biggest save of the game. Oliver with what may be the game-saving stop. Oh, and Long Beach here makes a mistake. However, here's a big, big save. So she really saves her team by sliding all the way over there and not allowing that goal. The ball's being thrown out of the pool right now. There was well, some miscommunication. Long, well, Long Beach State wanted to call a timeout is what happened. Yeah. And so they're talking about it right now with the official. So what happened is that Long Beach got the ball there and in kind of a panic, um, one of the players threw it to a swimming player and they lost the ball. However, the coach had requested a timeout before that. They do have a horn for a timeout, which was not used. So I think there's some discussion going on. If anyone saw if the timeout was requested, yes or no, before the ball was stolen by Santa Barbara. Well, I'm not sure it was even stolen. I, I think they were in the midst of trying to figure out who had the ball. And we see a five. Oh, you know what's happening? They requested a timeout without having one, I think. And that's ah. why we see a five meter. And there's a penalty shot. It's good by the Gauchos. Manny Kuster. And this one is far from over with 45 seconds left. Makes it 11 10. Yeah. Beach. So what uh, Long Beach will want to do is run out of 35. Um, seconds and then defend for what they worked for 10 more seconds. So I uh, just confirmed that the Long Beach only has a 30 second timeout left over. So were they requesting a full timeout? I'm not too sure what happened. I think that's what's happened, what happened, but a timeout request is a timeout request, so it can be a 30 second. What are you about? 12 second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. And here we see a steal for Santa Barbara yes. and a timeout for Santa Barbara. They still have 28 seconds to score. That took a quick turn. Didn't it? <laughs> well, you talked about it. I mean, how things work sometimes. It's not over till it's over. Till the last whistle blows. So this is again only a 30 second timeout. So the team knows what they do. They might have talked about it during their full timeout that they took only a minute of game time ago. So the shot clock, game clock, 
are even. So it'll come down to this. If the Gauchos can score, we'll go to overtime. If they don't, Long Beach State will win. 16 more seconds to go. Long pass to a lob shot that goes onto the post. And it's time out for Long Beach. It's only a 30 second time out here. Um, they have eight seconds to defend the ball. They're up by one. So that should be, if all goes well, a win for Long Beach. But let me not jinx it yet. <laughs> eight more seconds to go. Well, that lob shot aiming for the far corner just off that post. And they're bringing a player into the field. I think just because players are generally a little better at defending the ball than goalies. Let's take a look at this one more time. This could have been the difference here tonight or this afternoon and just missing. Right idea. So eight seconds remaining. Long Beach State will have the ball. They just need to run the clock out. The advance to take on UC Irvine tomorrow. That's easier said than done. There's seven players against seven of Santa Barbara against seven of Long Beach. So in the past, the goalie could not cross halfway. So everybody would be on their defensive side and it would be seven against six. Right now, all players can be anywhere in the field. So it's seven against seven. You just want to keep it away from UCSB and they don't get a shot in that empty goal. Exactly. So Clock three more seconds. Two, one, and there it is. What a real back and forth battle but long beach state wins it over uc santa barbara 11 to 10 they advance we'll take a break come back we'll have more from manoa as we move toward a brighter future hmsa is here to help you live your best life whether you see a doctor in person, online, or after hours, getting quality care is easy and convenient when you've got options. Choose a plan that fits your lifestyle and needs. Here at home or around the world, get the care you need. When the only constant is change, HMSA is here with you. For the good times, for the tough times, for lifetimes. Learn more at HMSA.com. <laughs> Hello, it's back. At Taco Bell Hawaii, the shredded Kahlua pork, grilled stuffed burrito, double XL quesadilla, and nachos bel grande are back. Spread the word, Kahlua pork is back. Only at Taco Bell Hawaii. To the next 125 years of families. The next 125 years of entrepreneurs and the next 125 years of dreamers who never stop pursuing their happiness. Mahalo for letting Bank of Hawaii help you pursue what makes you happy for the last 125 years. We can't wait to see and be a part of the next 125. On this week's show, we honor cultural practitioners and scientists who help us take better care of our ocean. We'll hear from the late Dr. Isabella Abbott, a well-respected ethnobotanist specializing in limu. We'll visit with scientists learning about Mauna Lua Bay. We'll go to Kauai with the Ko'olau Limu Hui, and we'll hear from Uncle Mac Poi Poi on Molokai. Tune in to Outside Hawaii, only on Spectrum OC 16. 100% original, 100% local. There you see the final a nail biter as the third seed Long Beach State advances over number six seed UC Santa Barbara by the final score of 11 to 10. That caps off a three match day here at the Duke Kahana Moku. Got underway beginning at, what was it, 10 a.m. this morning as UC San Diego won in overtime over UC Davis 12-11. Uh, Irvine got a little bit more than they thought they would from season, but they hang on and win 13-9. And then, of course, the match that we just saw. So the brackets are set for the semifinals beginning tomorrow at 11 a.m. Number one seed Hawaii will take on the fifth seed UC San Diego, while the two and three seeds will battle UC Irvine and Long Beach State. A lot of entertaining water polo here on the opening day of the Big West Tournament. Definitely, there were some really good games. It was fun to watch, I think, especially that first and the third game, so the one we just saw, and then the San Diego win. 
Um, those were really good games, lots of battles, and um, maybe a little surprising San Diego won, but mm -hmm. it, 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 they deserved it, I think. Um, and this now Long Beach uh, fencing to the semifinal too. They played really well all game long, and I think Santa Barbara was a little too inconsistent at times. They started off with all of those offensive fouls, and then in the final quarter, those power plays that they weren't able to um, convert into goals. So I think that's where they lost their game, and Long Beach came out with the W. All right, should be a fun one tomorrow. Semi-final action. We get underway at 11 a.m., so make sure that's Hawaii time. That is... Uh 2 p.m. Yeah. on the West Coast. All right, that'll wrap things up for us here on this Thursday afternoon from the Duke Kahanamoku Aquatics Complex. Special thanks, as always, to our terrific and outstanding Spectrum Sports crew. From my broadcast part partner, Femka, I'm Scott. Until next time, bidi aloha and a good afternoon. Aloha, everybody.